Hello, my friends. I'm Jonathan Spivey, the guy that usually plays the organ and piano around here. But today, I get to talk to you. And before we start, let's allow our hearts to become quiet as we listen to some beautiful music. Thank you, Jenny Beecham. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for being our rock and our salvation. Be with us as we meditate on your word and on the word made flesh, our friend Jesus. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 18. Once a Jewish leader asked Jesus this question, Good sir, what shall I do to get to heaven? Do you realize what you are saying when you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good and no one else. But as to your question, you know what the Ten Commandments say. Don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't lie, honor your parents, and so on. The man replied, I've obeyed every one of those laws since I was a small child. There is one thing you lack, Jesus said. Sell all you have and give the money to the poor and come follow me. But when the man heard this, he went away sadly. You're a good man. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. You're a good man. How many times do you hear that phrase thrown around? You're a good man. Hey, Bob, hand me that hammer. Thanks, Bob, you're a good man. Wow, that was easy. King Henry V needed some good men for his battle. Outnumbered five to one by some estimates, the good men of Henry V won against the French at the Battle of Agincourt. What's that saying, a good man is hard to find? It doesn't seem like it around here, actually. And please insert the word woman in all these phrases. I actually think our church is blessed with many good women who outplan and outwork the men all the time. But Jesus says, actually, there's only one good person, and that is God. And in this story with the rich young ruler, he shows that man, the man who lives a life of strict obedience, still doesn't make you good. Nope, sorry, you need to sell everything and give all your money to the poor. Hey, what kind of standard is that? 
I think Jesus is intentionally showing us how impossible, how futile it is to try to be good. Maybe Jesus is hinting that he wants our hearts to be in tune with his. He wants us in relationship with him. He wants us to spend our COVID-19 days getting to understand and love him better. Are we doing that? We can't really blame it on not having enough time. Not this time. So in Romans 12, Paul encourages people to be good, to be better, actually. Listen to this. Verse 6, God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well. So if God has given you the gift of serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, do a good job of teaching. If God has given you money, be generous in helping others with it. Don't just pretend that you love others. Really love them. Never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This past Monday, I got to study a fellow COP member as he ministered to the hungry people who showed up at our food pantry. I'll call him Ross, mainly because that's his actual name. A scruffy homeless guy on foot introduced himself as Robert, and Ross loaded him up with food and a rare gallon of milk. Wow, thanks, he said, between gulps of cold milk. You're a good man. What's your name? Ross, he answered. You need another bag to carry your food? No, thanks. My friends are coming soon. I'll just sit over here. And he drank about a third of that milk. Soon he settled down, and his head started nodding. So Ross goes over, hey man, you really shouldn't sleep here. You're right in the sun and it's just way too hot on you. And he helps Robert to his feet. Wow, thanks. You're a good man. What was your name again? Oh, Ross, Ross, oh right, Ross. He looks over at me and points at Ross. This is a good man. I know he is, I said. Yeah, notice my leading role in this scene. I just watched as our good man helped this rough-looking dude with love, looking him in the eye, offering him a stabilizing hand. There was no mystery as to why the homeless man immediately sensed he was dealing with a good man, even if he kept forgetting his name. He sure didn't forget that he was good. At that moment, it didn't matter whether Ross had followed the letter of Mosaic law from childhood or helped defeat the French at Agincourt, or had achieved professional success even. The only thing that mattered was that he spent his Monday morning trying to follow Jesus' example of loving neighbor. It is both the simplest and hardest thing to do. Friends, today God is looking for a few good men and women. And after we've acknowledged that nobody is truly good, we also know that we can most definitely be joyful followers of Jesus and share his goodness with our neighbors. Let's spend a few of our many minutes of isolation in serious prayer. Let's ask God to shape us into worthy disciples, people who love, people who give and work and do stuff. Maybe one day we'll be considered good by a homeless person or by that other person who became homeless for us, our Savior Jesus. And that's today's good word. Let us pray. God, thank you for showing us that you just want our hearts. So we give them to you now. Amen. Amen.